Assalamu alaikum, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to Masjid El Rasul's 10 Nights of Muharram 2022 program. We started the program with Quran recitation. Next, we will invite Sayyid Mansur Ali Rizvi to present the Muharram lecture for tonight. Then we will have Matam, a few announcements, and close with this Ziarat. Now, let's welcome Sayyid Mansur Ali Rizvi to present the Muharram lecture with a loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Brothers and sisters in Iman, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I begin in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. All praise belongs to Him. The one who creates, but is not created. The one who sees, but is unseen. The one who gives and takes life, but is ever living. And the one who gave us the best example for us to follow. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma sallam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qala al-a'rabu when to dear Allah our soul, the Yalil Yalitkum Minamalikum Shaykh in Allah Gafuru Rashi. Sadakullah Ali Rabbi. The verse of the Quran. The verse of the Quran that I just recited is from Surah Hujurat, 49th chapter, the 14th verse. And the translation is as follows. The Bedouin Arabs say, we have believed. Say, you have not yet believed, but say instead, we have submitted, we have become Muslims. For faith has not yet entered your hearts. And if you obey Allah and his messenger, he will not deprive from you your deeds of anything. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. So the Quran if someone was to ask you who you are or what are you, how would you answer? Would we say, I'm a doctor, I'm an engineer, I'm a lawyer, I'm a techie, I'm a plumber? Or would we say, I'm American, I'm Iraqi, I'm Pakistan, I'm a Kojan, or I'm black, I'm white, I'm Latino? Would you answer, oh, I'm a son, I'm a father? Or would you answer, I'm male, I'm a female? Or would you answer, I'm a human? Or if there's any gin listening, you'd answer, you're gin. Would you identify yourself and answer, oh, I'm a, I'm a vegan, I'm a vegetarian, I'm a herbivore, I'm an omnivore? Would you identify or answer the question as capitalist, socialist, communist? Or would you answer, well, I'm, I'm Muslim, or I'm Shia, or I'm atheist. So when we look at that verse, one of the things that should be a point of reflection is that it's, it's one thing to identify ourselves as something. It's another thing to live up to that identity. So here, for example, the Bedouin Arabs at the time were eager to call themselves believers. But Allah is telling the Prophet to tell them, no, no, not exactly. Not believers, at least not yet. You can say that you submitted or you're Muslims verbally. But having faith and calling themselves a movement is a different thing in a different category. So similarly, identities place a crucial part in our lives. And we may have multiple identities. Like some of the 
theoretical questions I ask are ways that people identify themselves. So people can, and as a primary identity, I'm talking about that. People may initially identify themselves based on their profession or ethnicity or their family background or what fraternity they belong. You know, there's different ways that people can go about identifying themselves. Now, what do identities do for us? Identities give us our priorities, our boundaries, the sense of belonging to those who may share that particular identity. Now, one note on priorities, as we are talking about priorities here as well. If you want to know what a person's priorities are, don't ask them, hey, hey what are your priorities? Because May, most people say, oh, you know, it's my faith, it's my family, it's my whatever. Instead, if you want to truly gauge someone's priorities, see how they spend their time. Then you have a real good idea of what a person's true priorities are. Now, is there a problem in having multiple identities? And the answer is no. A person, for example, can be a Muslim, and a plumber at the same time. And so there's no issues with people having multiple identities. But what happens when the values of one identity conflict with the values of another? Then it becomes incumbent upon us to navigate these different identities. Sallallahu Muhammad wa Muhammad. Now, one book recommendation that I'd like to give when it comes to this topic, and this is a generally very good book that I recommend people reading. This is called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Dr. Stephen Covey. And at the end of his book, he has a section devoted to what he calls centers. And we can look at these centers as different identities. So for example, he has a center in which he calls family. He has a center that had related to a person's job. He even has a center related to a person's religious identity. Now, Dr. Covey himself, the late Dr. Covey, was a practicing Mormon, and he was a religious person. And for him, taking a God-centric approach was key and very important. And if you get a chance, any person who appreciates values, religious values, and practical religious values will definitely appreciate this book, especially the last kind of so how do you go about navigating these different identities? The way we go, one of the ways we go about managing these multiple identities is taking a look at which identities are the most important. And so for example, the identity which is given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in which we have to actively do so. So for example, for us, most of us listening today, there'll be Muslim or particular Shios. And so there are certain values that are attached when a person chooses to have that identity. And, is there, and it gives us a roadmap as to what to do when, say another identity clashes with another identity. I want to use an extreme example. Say for example, I identify myself as a Muslim, but at the same time, I identify uh, as myself as a person who sells beer. Now, from an Islamic perspective, those two identities are problematic. And what? Because a person choosing to have an Islamic identity is not supposed to deal with alcohol. Whereas the other identity, the person who has a beer type business, that I, if they identify themselves as that, that, that whole action is in contradiction with what would, we would deem as Islamic values. But what about identities where it's not always so clear cut? For example, if I was to ask you, is there a problem with being a business person and a Muslim? The answer is no. The problem becomes is when our identities as a business person supersedes the identity as a Muslim. So what do I mean? For example, as a business person, maybe I sell multiple things. I sell cars, I sell you know, toys, 
But if I start selling things that are problematic in the faith, for example, alcohol or other things, that's where that identity has to take a step below our primary identity as a Muslim. Or another example, is there a problem, for example, with me identifying myself as a Muslim and as an American? No, absolutely not. Can such identities be problematic? Yes. When there's a conflict, for example, a conflict, and this would apply to any country, not just the United States. If, for example, a country that we identify, either through citizenship or birth. If, for example, the people in that society are going to war, and we decide, well, you know, because I'm loyal, I'm nationalistic, I have to support them. But what if the war is an unjust war? And you see, you have a type of competition of values. And so this is where we have to, we have to ask ourselves, what are the most, which values take priority? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. And so it also helps to keep in mind why a person chooses to have a particular identity. For many people, it gives them a sense of belonging. And this is something that many Islamic community centers have to pay attention to. If, for example, a person identifies as a Muslim and goes to a place where other people identify as Muslim, but they're somehow seen as lesser than them, then that person will not feel that sense of camaraderie or sense of belonging in that, that particular identity. So what happens next? That person will go somewhere else to seek another identity, another sense of belonging. And for example, in colleges, when people are new to college, why do, why do many students join fraternities? Because it provides an identity. It's a source of identifying ones. Now, I'm not saying, you know, joining a fraternity itself, like unilaterally is problematic, but there's certainly, for those of us who are going to college, there's certainly certain things that are problematic when a person uh, joins a fraternity and things that go on that a person should be aware of. And identity, for example, is also a result of something that we actively choose. And that's ne a necessity for us, like our work, our business. And this is why it's important if we want to identify ourselves based on our career, or whatever business we choose, that the values in that career do not in any way, shape or form supersede the values of what it means to be a Muslim and connecting ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Muhammad wa alayhi wa Now, can even the identity that we take as Muslims or Shias, can that be problematic? And the answer is yes. And you're wondering, well, wait a minute, how can identifying as Muslims or Shias, how can that be problematic? That is when we take a very tribal approach to identity. And that we don't, for example, when rather than looking at the identity as something espoused by values, we simply look at identity for the sake of identity. I can give some examples. When you, for example, when you see many members of the Jewish community, Many of them you find don't observe the kosher dietary laws. Some of them eat pork. Some of them are even atheist. And so it boggles the mind, like, wait a minute, how can somebody be Jewish and atheist? For these individuals who identify themselves as Jewish and atheist, for them, Judaism does not become a, like a, like a, a religious identity, but becomes more a cultural identity. So this is the same thing that can happen with Muslims. One day, there was a man, this is a bit of a humorous anecdote, there's a man who was standing besides a bridge and he was feeling very suicidal. He had lost all hope. And so another man comes up and says, oh, you know, what's going on? And he's like, oh, 
I'm so sad, you know, I can't take life anymore. And the person asks him, no, don't, you know, your life is precious. Don't, you know, don't go killing yourself. He said, well, tell me about yourself. What's your name? He goes, oh, my name is Jaffa. Said, the other person asked him, oh, are you Muslim? He goes, yes, I'm Muslim. Oh, he says, Salaam alaikum. Well, alaikum Muslim. He's like, oh, which uh, school of thought do you follow? He goes, oh, I'm Shia. He's like, oh, I'm Shia too. So the other person asks him, are you a Sully or a Khmari? He goes, well, I'm a Sully. He goes, oh, I'm a Sully too. He goes, which marja do you follow? He goes, well, I follow the same for Allah. The man, the man pushes him off the ledge like Gaffer. Sometimes identities can be very, they're supposed to be based on values. But often people take them to be more based on a birth, a type of birth nature, or more like a tribal type. And this is something, as Muslims, is contradictory to the teachings of Islam. One of the things that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam did his utmost best to root out was tribalism. One of the things that we see if we came to Medina, he was matching up people. He wanted to put people in different levels of prominence, not based on their tribe. One of the reasons why he had the law of Rahmatullah as a mother. That's why he gave comments to other companions who are not from Quraysh or not Arabs. And so, while it's fine to have different identities, and while, of course, having identity as a Muslim and a Shia is important, what we need to understand is why we have the, those identities. When I identify myself as a Muslim, I identify myself as a Shia. Am I taking it as a very tribal approach? Or is it something that I'm cognizant of the values and I identify myself as a Muslim because of the values and as a Shia because of the values? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, as we are gathered here in the ayam of Hussein alayhi wa sallam, I remember the sacrifice of his friends, his family members. Tonight we honor one of the sons of Imam Hussein Ali Akbar. Ali Akbar. As Ali Akbar and Imam Hussein are proceeding on the way to Karbala, Imam Hussein tells Ali Akbar, I have a dream I'm going to share with you. And the dream was, as he's telling his son, our caravan is heading towards death. And Ali al-Akbar asked him, are we not on truth? And Mahmoud Hussain al said, yes, we are. And Ali al-Akbar responded, then we do not care whether we meet death or death meets us. On the day of Ashura, court state, Imam Hussein had Ali al-Akbar give the other. Some say that his voice reminded, the voice of Ali al-Akbar reminded Imam Hussein of his grandfather, that in both in his physical resemblance and his voice, he resembled the Prophet Muhammad. And then Ali al-Akbar, he was the son of, the grandson of Ali, he fought valiantly. When he would fight, he would come back to his father after fighting the battle and say, Father, I suffer from thirst. Because the soldiers had blockaded the Euphrates and they were not able to get water. So this brave warrior was complaining about thirst to his father. Imam Hussein, some reports say Imam Hussein stuck out his tongue so that Ali Akbar could try to take whatever moisture as possible. Imam Hussein's own tongue was dropped. Some state that he gave him a ring to put in his mouth. And 
then on the other went to go fight. Imam Hussein's crying, saying, how quickly shall you meet your grandfather who will give you a drink, after which you shall never suffer of thirst. Ali Akbar fought valiantly, but he was finally killed. Now, Ali Akbar is able to have his thirst quenched by his great grandfather, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Thank you, Sayyid Mansour, for your inspiring Muhammad lecture for tonight. Now, let us welcome Brother Abdul Rahim to recite a noha and matam during these 10 nights of Muharram program with a loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. A'zamallahu ujurana wa ujurakum. في مصابنا بالحسين عليه السلام. May Allah increase our and your rewards for the mourning the tragedy of Imam Al Hussein عليه السلام. From Karbala, Karbala, Karbala to I, I left my heart in Karbala from Karbala, Karbala, Karbala to Karbala, Karbala, Karbala. I, I left my heart in Karbala, the luminous moonlight in the way, the rising sun that Brightens the day, heaven without you would be in vain. You're the heaven in Karbala. No visitors offered you the hand. Enemies will never understand. How can the water lose to the sand? How can the thirst well in Karbala? Ah, heaven is open, Ya Hussein. Ah, angels descending, Ya Hussein. Ah, they are reciting Karbala from Karbala, Karbala, Karbala to Karbala, Karbala, Karbala. I, I left my heart in Karbala From Karbala, Karbala, Karbala To Karbala, Karbala, Karbala I, I left my heart in Karbala The hand of God that nurtures the young Speaking for Allah, you were the tongue, separating the right from the wrong, elevated in Karbala. The ship that sails swiftly through the waves, and whoever boards your ship is safe, protected from the punishment of the grave. Whoever mourned you, Karbala, when will we meet again, Yahweh? When under your tongue, when I grieve again, from the death when I walk the Karbala. When, when will we meet again, Yahweh? When under your dome, when I grieve again, from Najaf when I walk to Karbala, from Karbala, 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 to 
Karbala, Karbala, Karbala. I, I love my heart in Karbala. From Karbala, Karbala, Karbala. To Karbala, Karbala, Karbala. I, I love my heart in Karbala. Thank you, Brother Abdul Rahim, for reciting this heartfelt Noah and leading us in the time for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. I would like to also thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank all of you for your blessed participation in this year's Masjid al-Rasul Houston Muharram program. I pray that during these 10 special nights, we will continue to learn new lessons from the events of Karbala, and it will help us enhance our spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very briefly, before we close with Ziyarat, I would like to invite all of you to our weekly programs. On Thursdays, we have a weekly dual Camille program, <clears throat> English program via Zoom at nine central time. We also provide brothers the opportunity to sign up to recite dual Camille in English Look for that sign up sheet on Thursdays provided as a link in the Zoom chat. On Fridays, we perform the Juma prayer at Masjid Al Rasul in the Fifth Ward, Houston at 1.30 p.m. Led by Said Mansour Ali Rizvi. We also have our monthly share meal program where we share a cooked meal with the local community members of the Fifth Ward. We would also like to invite you to our monthly cemetery program at Paradise Cemetery, where we pray for the deceased Mukminin, sweep the grave sites, apply incense and zamzam water for the graves. The sisters also have a weekly spiritual growth program on Sundays. We will also have periodic celebrations and commemoration programs at Masjid El Rasul Fifth Ward Houston, which we will announce via email as these programs are planned. Our next program at Masjid Al Rasul was scheduled for August 27th, a monthly fan family dinner circle where we discuss various topics as a community. Finally, we ask all our brothers and sisters to support the Masjid Al Rasul. 2022 program on Zoom by donating as little as $20 or more to help us maintain the masjid and our programs. Please click on the corresponding night and choose from the amounts listed. We also have been blessed with the authorization of Ayatollah Sistani to receive combs from the mukminin, We are authorized to utilize half of the Sam Imam combs for Masjid Al Rasul, Fifth Ward, Houston, Texas. I will leave the sponsor a Muharram Night PayPal link and combs donation link in the chat and give you a couple of minutes to utilize the link before we close with Ziarat. Voices may be small, but listen to our call. Come and join in our pain for our 
Of my head, I would rather be dead. Our voices may be small, but listen to our call. Come and join in our pain for our beloved Hussein. Our voices may be small, but listen to our call. Come and join in our pain for our beloved Hussein. He takes his family away from the city, away from politics. And all the dirty tricks They chase him down, you see And his men seventy Take them to Karbala To make them shuhada Our voices may be small But listen to our call Come and join in our pain For our beloved Hussain Our voices may be small But listen to our call Come and join in our pain For our beloved Hussain From what door? Mockingly they stare with arrows in the air. They take a boss's hand and Akbar to the sand. The thirst of young Asghar, so quenched by his murder. Our voices may be small, but listen to our call. Come and join in our pain for our beloved Hussain. Let's now close with Ziyarat. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah wa ala al-arwah al-lati hallat ifinaik alayka minna salamu Allah abadan ma baqina wa baqiya al-laylu wa al-nahar وَلَا جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ آخِرَ الْعَهْدِ مِنَّا لِزِيَارَتِكُمْ السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا محمد بن عبد الله ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا مولاي يا أمير المؤمنين يا علي بن أبي طالب ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا بنت رسول الله يا فاطمة الزهراء ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا مولاي يا حسن بن علي المجتبى ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله الحسين السلام على التسعة الأئمة من ذريتك السلام عليك يا مولاي يا حجة بن الحسن المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجك وسهل الله تعالى مخرجك وظهورك ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوات الله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Again thank you so much for joining us in the Masjid al Rasul Ten nights of Muharram program. We pray these auspicious nights help us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this ends the program for tonight. And let me remind you that we will be here, inshallah, every night for 10 consecutive nights at 9 p.m. Central Time. 
السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ